let f at x equals two minus x, g of x equal x squared plus x minus two, and h of x equals negative x squared plus four. Um, this one's not short and sweet. This one's a bit more complicated, okay? So in part A, we're gonna solve g of f at x. Okay, so f at x, uh, let's not do, well, we could do, yeah, we could do hot pink for f at x, okay? g of x, we'll do it in orange. And uh, let's do this light blue for h of x. Well, that's pretty. All right. So we want to know when this composite function, g of f at x, is going to equal 0. So let's start with the inside function, f at x. Okay, so we'll rewrite g. And then f at x is 2 minus x. Okay, so remember, inside out, inside out. So f at x is 2 minus x, and we're going to now substitute that into function g. All right, so function g is something squared plus something minus 2. That something, that x, is the inside function, which was f at x. Okay, so you're replacing x with 2 minus x. Okay, see what I did there? All the x's get replaced with 2 minus x. And then we're just going to figure out where this is equal to 0. Okay, so expand out that binomial. So FOIL it out so you'll get 4 minus 4x plus x squared plus 2 minus x minus 2 equals 0. I don't need that first equal sign there. Okay, um, I'm going to collect like terms. So we get x squared uh, minus 5x plus 4 is equal to zero. Oh, this is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, this is just inspection with this quadratic. So it'll be two numbers that add up to negative five, multiply to four, it'd be x minus four and x minus one equals zero. Therefore, x equals four and one. Done and done. All right. Part B, Whew. We, we, we got lots going on here. Okay, so we've got f times g at negative 1, and then we have h of f of 5 minus g of g at 0. Okay, um, I'm going to try to do this all in one color, like I'll just use... The, the black marker, just because I think if I were to do a whole bunch of different colors, I'm going to confuse myself because there's so much going on here. Let's just keep it straightforward and, and simple. We'll do it in baby steps. So let's do f times g at negative 1 first. So fg at negative 1. So I'm going to just do it in little baby steps here. So f times g at negative 1. This basically means f at negative 1 times g at negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to substitute negative 1 into function f. So it'll be 2 minus negative 1. And we're going to multiply that by g at negative 1. So you're going to sub negative 1 into function g. So it'll be negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 2. So we're going to get 3 times negative, that's 1 plus negative 1, 0, negative 2. So we get negative 6 for that first part. And now I'm going to do, um, let's do h of f at 5. Okay, so leave the outside function. We're working inside out. So we're going to sub 5 into function f. 
So it'll be 2 minus 5, because function f is 2 minus x, so 2 minus 5. So really, we're looking for h at negative 3. So you're going to now substitute negative 3 into function h. So it's negative on the outside, and then x, negative 3 squared. Careful with those negatives. If the negative is on the outside of the x squared, leave it on the outside, and then replace the x, all of x with negative 3. So all of negative 3 is being squared, plus 4. So we get negative 9 plus 4, which is negative 5. And then lastly, we have g of g at 0. Okay, so leave the outside g, and then you're going to sub 0 into function g. So it'll be 0 squared plus 0 minus 2. So g at 0 is really negative 2. So that was the inside. Negative 2 is the inside function. Now you sub negative 2 into the outside function, which just so happens to be g as well. So it'll be negative 2 all squared plus negative 2 minus 2. Uh, that's 4 minus 2, which is 2, 2 minus 2, which is 0. All right, now we just have to combine all these. So we're going to go fg at negative 1, which is negative 6. We're going to add h of f at 5, which was negative 5. And then we're going to subtract g of g at 0, which is a 0. So final answer is negative 11. All right, part C, Ooh, f of g at x is equal to negative 16. So we're solving, so that means we need to figure out what x is. So let's start by doing the composite. f of g at x is equal to negative 16. So let's do the composite. So we're going to do g. What was g? I'm going to zoom out here, guys, just a little bit so I can see my functions. Um, g is that quadratic, so f of x squared plus x minus 2 equals negative 16. So I'm going to sub that quadratic into function f. f was the linear function, 2 minus x. So it's going to be 2 minus x. Okay, now we're going to replace the x with x squared plus x minus 2. Make sure you put brackets around the x squared plus x minus 2 because you're subtracting all of it. So function f is 2 minus x, but you replace x with the inside function, which is the, uh, the quadratic. So really we have 2 minus x squared minus x plus 2 equals negative 16. We have a quadratic equation, so to solve a quadratic, you're going to make one side equal to zero, factor, and solve. So I like to make my x squareds positive, so I'm going to make the left side equal to zero. So zero is equal to x squared plus x, and then I'm going to take the 2 and 2, which is 4, and subtract, the, uh, subtract it to the other side, so I get minus 20. And then again, easy peasy with the factoring because it's inspection. So two numbers that add to 1 multiply to negative 20 would be x plus 5, x minus 4. Therefore, x is equal to negative 5 and positive 4.